Hi, I'm Dan. I welcome to the Airverse Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. I had a request from a viewer of mine to get my take on how I approach my paintings with a light source. A light source is probably one of the you know most difficult things for somebody who doesn't have an artistic background or an art background to uh, get the concept of. I'm going to try to break it down in nice easy steps in the way I learned it years ago. Now I do have a slight advantage because before I started airbrushing I used to do a lot of art so I kind of understood the concept of a light source but it is very important to get your uh, artwork to look 3D or and or pop off the page. Without getting the light source correct your paintings can look flat or look off if the shadows don't appear where they're supposed to appear based on your light source. So with that, I'm going to get into this video. If you like what you see here, please consider subscribing. Check out all my affiliate links down below for the products I'll be using in this video and all the other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right. So I think it's important to first get the basics of what light sources and direction and how it reacts on an object. And the best way probably to explain this is with a ball. So in this case, the light source is up here on the upper left. Light travels in straight lines. Okay. So the light is hitting this object. <clears throat> it's creating two things. It's creating a light area and a shadow area. Okay. So when the light hits an object, it's going to roll over the object. Now, it's always going to create a highlighted area which is always the brightest area. Okay. Then it's going to create a half tone as it's rolling over the object. And half tone is just half the tone between the darkest tone and the lightest tone. Okay. So it's your half tone. And then as the light reflects or passes by the object even more, it's going to roll into a form shadow. Okay. And your reflected light. Now, if you were to draw a straight line down past this ball, you would see that that line would run out to the end of the shadow, and then you'd run a straight line down through here where it hits this edge. You'll find that that is the beginning of the shadow or the cast or drop shadow. Okay, so that is an easy way by just holding up a straight edge to your which where your light source is coming in and seeing where the beginning the beginning and the end of your shadow would be okay so it's as basic as that but it does you know when you're talking about light sources and how it reacts on objects and reflections it's going to be a lot more than what i can explain in this video and there's some great videos out there um i've watched many of them throughout the years um, but you really just need to know the basics to start getting your artwork to look really you know more realistic Okay, so let's start with the most basic concept of light source. So I always think of things as hills or mountains is the best way to explain this. And again, light runs in straight lines. In this case, I have it coming from left to right. As it hits the mountain, it's going to hit the mountain and stop. Okay, and if you ran that line straight through, that's going to be where the other side of your light source is going to be in shadow. It's as simple as that. But as this line runs across, and again, if you held a straight edge up and you kept everything parallel to the lines or the light direction that you want, you would see where it passes over your object and hits into your next object. So everywhere this is red would be in light. Everywhere that it's dark is going to be in shadow. So that again, that is the most basic concept of light direction. The next example, is basically what we were looking at before with the ball, but just not so in depth. Basically, in its most basic form is light sources coming down, again, in straight lines. And the biggest takeaway here would be that, again, your straight line coming off the edge of your object, as long as it's parallel to your light source, beginning and end will give you where that cast shadow is, okay? So I don't really do it much anymore on my paintings, but when I was learning this concept, I would take it. I had a little six inch ruler and I would always hold it up to write on my artwork to kind of give myself a little bit of a guide, just, you know, a visual reference and I'd, I'd remove it and then at least give me direction of where I was, you know, getting things so it was proportional, where things were starting and stopping. 
All right, so for this next example, like on the cylinder here, the light's coming in horizontal or almost perpendicular to the object. So this, obviously, on the side of the light is all going to be lit up. Now, your highlight is going to be at the tangent point of your cylinder or the highest point. Think of it that way. Even though it's a, you know, you're coming across this way, it's still the highest point um, in which the light is going to hit. For at that point, it's going to pass by your object. So that's where your highlight is going to occur. You got your uh, shadow um, in, in behind, behind that highlight. Now, what I like to do in order to try to measure this drop shadow um, or this cast shadow is if something's coming in, the light source is coming in pretty much perpendicular to my object, okay, the light's going to pass over the top and back down to the ground at some point. If you look at this line that I put in here, it's basically a 45 degree triangle, okay? Um, and that should be pretty proportionate. Depending on where your, again, the, the direction or the degree of your light source, that is very, very difficult for me to try to teach that. Um, there are a lot of other videos out there that are going to be a lot more lengthier and a lot more in depth, but I'm just trying to keep this basic so you can start applying some of these principles to your artwork. Now, I think this next and last one that I have for you on the computer here is really cool. Um, this is a 3D object, but it looks 2D right now because right now it's void of light, okay, and or shadow. So right now it looks like two pieces or two different colors coming together and some pencils, but nothing looks all that 3D, right? And it's because it's void of light and shadow. As soon as you add some light to it, you see what happens. It just pops off the page. And this is what you want to start getting your artwork to do. You know, you want flat things or 2D objects to look 3D. And the only way to do that is by adding shadow, light and shadow. Now, this is your light source. It could be coming down slightly from the top or straight in at it like I have it here. But here's the deal. This line right here matches this line right here. This is the same angle. It's come straight in at it. If I was to take and copy this red line down here, it would be the same angle. It hits that crease between the two colors and then shoots vertically straight up. Hence, making the pencil look like it's popping off the page 3D. 2D, 3D. That's probably the best example I can show to you that really drives the point home between light and shadow and what it can do for you. Okay, now I'm going to show you some light sources that are in actual paintings I've done. Um, this painting was done quite some time ago, um, but I picked it because I think it's a really good representation of how you can make something 2D really pop with 3D with just a light source and some shadowing. Um, so as you can see, the light source basically is coming in from here. Okay, again, from right. I kind of like, you know, I'll leave, I like light sources that come in from angles, either um, left to right or right to left. In this case, it's coming in from, you know, my right to left. It's coming in. You can see why this is in shadow here, right? So the light source is coming in. It's hitting this and missing this part. So that's a nice dark shadow and hits right here. So you can see the highlights where it's hitting. So the highlights are at the very top of the roll or fold. And then you have your nice dark shadows that create the valleys. Okay, so it really takes this 2D object and really pops it into 3D. But as you can see where the light source is coming from, it is definitely coming from this direction. Okay, so that's the other thing a lot of times people make the mistake. They'll have some shadow, you know, their light source coming in, all of a sudden they start putting their highlights on the wrong side because now you got cross light coming in, and that's not what you want. You want light coming in from one direction. Now, if the light source was just coming straight on to your object, you really won't have that much of shadow. You're still going to have shadowing, but um, the angle of your shadows can change. So I don't generally like to paint that way. Again, I like to come in left to right or right to left. This one's really easy to see. Now, I picked this one because um, I think it really, really captures what a light source can do for you. Um, the light source is coming from right to left or my right to left, looking at the painting. So you can see right in here is a lot of light. Okay, and as it hits the nose, you got your highlight right here, and passes the nose, 
you got your shadow. And as it rolls, passes over the nose, you pick up another highlight right here. So the nose itself is shadowing this way, okay? It wouldn't look right if you had your, your, your light coming in here and you put a shadow over here. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. Okay, you got to make sure if your shadows are all this way, whatever, think, think of a nose, don't even think of a nose as a nose. Think of a nose as a mountain, okay? And just like that real simple picture I showed you on the computer. So if the light hits the mountain with a nose, where's the shadow going to be? And when it passes over the mountain, where's the light going to be? Or I was asked what my approach is, and that's always my approach. I try to really make it simple, as simple as this. I always look at things as like little hills or, or mountains and where something's going, you know, the light's going to hit it and where is it going to cut out, where's the light going to cut out and where's it going to land after it passes the object, just like this here. Okay, so as you can see, this is all in light and this is her chin here, so her chin rolls around this way, so it's going to hit and the light's going to be void on the other side of her chin. Okay, because I have a pretty strong angle of light coming in here in her face this way. So it's in shadow here and it picks up again right here on the highlight of her hair. Well, there you have it. That's how I approach light sources and shadows. Hope you got something from this video. I think if you take the basics and just start applying it to your artwork, you're going to really see your artwork starting to pop off the page. Now, there's a lot more to know about light sources and shadows, and I think you should explore it a little bit more in depth. Um, it would take too much time in one video to explore it all. But I really think there's a lot of good information out there, and I think that you ought to take a look at it, and I think you're going to see your artwork go to the next level. So with that, I hope you really liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Check out all my affiliate links down below. Give me some comments, good or bad. It really helps the channel with the YouTube algorithm. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.